Join us as RMU Live begins right now. Good evening, and welcome to this edition of RMU Live for Tuesday, February 17th, 2009. I'm Andre Steed. And I'm Chris Walker. The economy tops the headlines tonight. It's being called by some possibly the most important trip that President Obama will make in his life. The president seen here leaving Washington, D.C. en route to Denver, Colorado earlier today to sign a $787 billion economic stimulus plan into law. Reportedly, the decision to sign the plan outside of Washington was made in order to symbolize where the money will be going and the jobs it's expected to create. Well, now that the stimulus package will be going into effect, the big question remains, will it actually help the ailing economy? CNN's Larry King recently spoke with personal finance expert Susie Orman on the possible effects of today's signing. You see anything encouraging? Yeah, here's what I see encouraging. The stimulus got passed. He has a plan. We now have to give him our support to make this plan help everybody. I wish everybody would stop saying it is dire, including the president. Stop telling everybody that it's dire, it's this, it's that. We have a plan. Let's see what we can do. Let's deal with the housing crisis now as well. And if we could just keep doing this little by little, we're going to get through it. Is it going to be easy? No, but we will eventually get through it. We need to Time, though, Larry. Now, many conservatives are continuing their criticism of the plan, saying the package is more of the same and simply adding to the problem. July 1st, California will lay off 20,000 people from their jobs. That's if Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger does not get the $11.2 billion allowance from lawmakers he's requested. Eliminating the jobs would save California $750 million a year. Governor Schwarzenegger declared a fiscal emergency back in December. A $5 million renovation in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh is set to begin this summer. Mayor Luke Ravenstahl announced earlier today that the plan will use the history of Market Square as inspiration, but add contemporary touches. And while there is a $500,000 gap in financing, Ravenstahl expects to have the money to go forward this summer. Market Square's new look is expected to be revealed in May or June of 2010. A father turned himself in after punching his son's elementary school principal. 40-year-old Taru Davis Sr. entered the Brighton Heights School searching from classroom to classroom for his 7-year-old son. The principal and a teacher's aide were injured during the ensuing melee. As of now, the son is in protective custody and is not being released, even to the boy's mother. A house fire turns fatal in one local neighborhood. Emergency crews found a home engulfed in flames along Montgomery Avenue in Scott Township yesterday afternoon. A 46-year-old man, whose identity is still being withheld, died in the fire after rescue attempts by three people, including his girlfriend. The victim was reported to have a broken leg and couldn't get out fast enough. Investigators have yet to determine what started the blaze. Two conjoined twins from Cleveland have been separated due to the efforts of the surgical team at Children's Hospital here in Pittsburgh. Dr. Joseph Losey and his team of surgeons performed the difficult operation on the twin two-year-olds. The procedure was the first of its kind ever because of the complex nature of the incisions that were involved. We're continuing to learn more details tonight about yesterday's fatal standoff at Seton Hill University. 22-year-old Joe Frederick Briggs was shot and killed by authorities in Greensburg Monday morning after threatening his roommates with a gun in an off-campus apartment. State police shot Briggs after he opened fire with a rifle from the building rooftop. Roommates living in the house are describing Briggs' actions as completely out of character, but do say he was having problems with a personal relationship. The university is offering counseling services to members of the Seton Hill community, along with a community mass that was held last night. February 24th, the 2009 Black History Month luncheon will take place from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the international suite of the Charles L. Soul Center. Ola R. Jackson, a 1987 alumnus and a member of the RMU Board of Trustees, will speak during the luncheon as a part of the Diversity Speaker Series. Reservations for the luncheon are required by this Friday to Student Life. There is no cost for students, and there's a $15 fee for faculty, faculty staff, and guests. For more information, contact the Office of Student Life at 416-436-7000. 
412-397-4352. The Colonial Theater production of Godspell was right around the corner. The show opens tomorrow at 8 p.m. and runs through this Sunday at Massey Theater. Tickets to the Stephen Schwartz Classic are available for $10. For more information, you can contact Student Life. And coming up after the break, the Auto Task Force revs up. And Brian Coddington will have your local weather forecast. But first, let's take a look at what happened on this day in history. She says, why lobster? <laughs> you never know when a colon There's polyp is going to show up. Aunt Ethel, you've been ducking me since 99 at St. Mary's. You Get the polyp early fly. and stop colon cancer before it starts. Do I look fat in this? Don't wait for symptoms. Get the test. Get the polyp. They love me. They want me here, don't you? Come on. Get the cure. These are my peeps. You hear the one about the rabbi and the reverend who like to party? A community coalition got them together with local restaurant owners. Now they host drug-free kids' parties. These guys know how to party. It's just one example of what community coalitions can do. But it's not the only way to keep kids away from drugs. Visit HelpYourCommunity.org to find out what your group can do. Because you get more. When you get together. The White House is pulling out all the stops to try and help automakers as a new presidential task force on autos has just been formed. The committee would help guide auto companies through difficult economic times such as bankruptcy and what has been described as bankruptcy-like proceedings. It would consist of representatives of nine different government agencies and the White House. Now, the members of this committee have not yet been named. Meanwhile, General Motors and Chrysler were required to submit recovery plans to the government today as part of their agreement to receive billions of dollars in federal loans. Illinois Senator Roland Burris, who's familiar with controversy, is again in the spotlight. This time, he's addressing new accusations brought against him. What's prompted me then to make the decision to file a separate affidavit that would show who we talked to and what we said. There was no change of any of our, of our testimony. We followed up as we promised the impeachment committee. We have done everything here that we said that we were going to do. So the information that's being reported in terms of the, that this was done because of there was a, a, a Fed uh, statement is absolutely, positively not true. It was done because we promised the committee we would supplement information in case we missed anything. End of story. God bless you all and thank you very much. Can you clarify when the a father of a 13-year-old may face felony charges due to a new sexting case. Brian Hunt of Massachusetts could be charged with possessing or exhibiting a photograph of a child in a sexual act in possession of child pornography after his son received an explicit email phone picture of a female classmate. This is yet another case of the often discussed sexting that is thought to occur in high schools nationwide, although in this case the people involved were middle school students. Is the Pakistani government making a dicey deal with insurgents? Desperate to restore peace to a Taliban-run section of the country near the Afghan border, Pakistani leaders agreed yesterday to enforce Islamic law in the region, giving in to long-standing requests by local militant leaders. Critics of the plan are blasting the deal, calling it a dangerous concession to extremists, known for beheadings and public stonings. Fears are also building that the imposition could spread to other areas. Noram Bibt Abdullah Al-Fayez has made history and became the first female minister in Saudi Arabia's history. 
the U.S. educated former teacher was appointed as the deputy minister of a recently created department for female students. This is considered a breakthrough for women in Saudi Arabia as they are not even permitted to drive in the predominantly Muslim country. And Secretary of State Hillary Clinton sending out a warning today to a nuclear North Korea. On a trip to Tokyo, the secretary warned against a threatened missile launch by the North Koreans in a move to strengthen the U.S. commitment to Japan's security. The nuclear threat topped Secretary Clinton's agenda after Monday's announcement by the North Koreans of their continued plan for space development, a term used in the past to disguise a long-range missile test as a satellite launch. And turning to the weather now, Andre, I think if, if, if I could sum it up in one word like it's been lately, mm -hmm. seasonal. Seasonal is, uh, is definitely what I would say, but it's going good. I see spring coming. And uh, now here's Mark Coddington with more weather. Well, it's actually Brian Coddington, but you're close, you're close. Uh, today was very seasonal. I thought it was actually really great. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Now, if you look at our temperature today, it was about 35 degrees. You know, dew point was 18, humidity was 45, pressure was about 30, and winds were coming from the south, south southeast from uh, 7 miles per hour. Now, if we go ahead and look at our actuals, you know, our actual was 35 with a low of 31. Normal around this time is about 39, 23, and our record is 68 and negative 10. Let's go ahead and look at our, the rest of the Pittsburgh area. We've got Beaver Falls is around 36, Butler's 34, Catanning's 34 as well, New Kensington and Pittsburgh are 35, Greensburg as well is 36, and if we go to the entire area, 38 in Detroit, Cleveland's 39, Erie's 35, Pittsburgh's 35, 40s around uh, West Virginia area, Columbus and Fort Wayne and, Fort, and uh, Lexington, 40, 48, and 39. Let's go ahead and look at tonight. Tonight we've got about snow. Believe it or not, the good weather today is, gonna la is not going to last. St snow with a temperature of 31, and then if we go... Over in the AM, we're looking at 31 in Beaver Falls, 28 in Butler, Catanian's 27, New Kensington's 29, Greensburg's 29 as well. Pittsburgh area is going to look at 31, so we're in the warm spot. And 29's both in Burkittstown. And uh, for tomorrow, we're looking at a wintry mix, so be careful walking around out there. It's going to be pretty icy. If you look at the five-day forecast, it's going to be not that great. It's going to be snowy with uh, Thursday's 31, low with 20, Friday's 26, 20, Saturday's 20, 27, 21, Sunday's 25, 20, Monday's 30, with a low of 20. And it's going to be really nasty up there. So back to you guys. So winter definitely making a return. Yes, yes, as Brian informed us. Now, Ernie, I hear there was a, a barn-burning pit Yukon game. Uh, you know, what, what happened? I missed it. Well, I won't, be just, I won't be just telling you about the pit game. But after the break, I'll be talking about Penn's coaching changes and also the lacrosse team had a thriller of a game at Joe Walton Stadium. How did it fare? Find out next. But first, take a look at the Athlete of the Week. I'm tall enough to reach the light switches. I'm big enough to brush my teeth by myself. I'm the tallest kid in my class. I haven't worn diapers in years. I'm much less likely to vomit at random now. <laughs> My cups don't have lids anymore. Mine either. I'm getting pretty big. But to help me survive a car crash, I still need you to give me a boost. Until they're four foot nine, use a booster seat in the car and don't let them down. On Sunday night, the Penguins general manager Ray Shiro announced that Michael Terrian has been relieved of his coaching duties. And the Wilkes-Barre Scranton head coach Dan Abysmal was named, was named the Terrian's replacement for now. How will the Pens fare for, for, for their first game? Let's head out to Long Island to find out. All right, now the Penguins going here. Um, they're going to be coming up here. Sidney Crosby, you see him getting ready for this game. This is a close game. Um, actually, this was the end of the game. The Penguins were to lose three to two. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. Um, well, we do have the highlight from the pit game. All right, and here's 
Pitt Panthers. Uh, um, Hashin um, Dijon, he had a couple of big plays in this game. Um, Kevin Walker and Jason Gilbert, they all had big plays in this. And, of course, um, the UConn was playing as cold as ice that day, actually. Well, staying on the ice, though, the pride of Sheffield Village, Ohio, Ohio broke an NCAA record. Goalie Brian McLaughlin, in the span of four seasons, has saved 3,603 shots. That, my friend, is an NCAA record. She got the record during the tough loss against Mercier's 5-1. The mark was held by Sharon Volgat, who played, in, played at Minnesota from the time span of 2001 to 2004. The previous mark was 3,590 saves. The Colonials will be returning to action on Friday as they host the Wayne State Warriors at the <coughs> Clearview Arena. Now on something that I thought I would never say, Robert Morris beats Penn State at Joe Alton Stadium. The men's lacrosse team hosted the Nittany Lions this past Saturday, and both teams played a tough game. Bob had the lead in the first six, had the lead in the first half, six to three. But Penn State would not go down easy. They came back in the second half to tie it up 11 all. This game would need to go into double overtime. Then Corey Tabrimley put the ball in the back of the net to send Penn State packing. The final score, 11 to 12. Take a look at the Colonial scoreboard, and this has been Ernie Bernard on Sports. Hayek had a very romantic Valentine's Day. The 42-year-old actress married the father of her daughter on Valentine's Day in Paris. Hayek and French billionaire Francois-Henri Pinot had a small civil ceremony at City Hall. The wedding comes after an on and off romance. The two became engaged in 2007, but broke off the engagement last July. They were back together a few months later. The 46-year-old Pinot runs the French luxury group PPRSA, which owns high-end labels including Gucci and Puma. Singer Justin Timberlake is one of the most stylish men in America, at least according to GQ magazine. The publication picked the 28-year-old entertainer to lead the list of the top 10 most stylish men. GQ noted Timberlake's impact on fashion and willingness to take risks. The singer, who has his own clothing line, said he considers model Kate Moss a style icon. Other stylish men on the list included rappers Kanye West and T.I. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Michelle Wright reporting from Atlanta. So stylish, stylish people, why didn't they include us on that list? Uh, you know, I think it might be uh, our commitment to suits and ties there it, that gets us in trouble. It could be, especially <laughs> mine are from 1978. But. <laughs> you know what, I like that. I think my dad had one of those, though. Uh, you know, it wasn't bad. He wore it to my, have. my grandma's 50th anniversary, huh? <laughs> Uh, that's all that's all we have for you today folks thanks for joining us and don't forget to catch our other RMU TV programming you can see RMU live every Tuesday and Thursday at 530 RMU tonight at 8 o'clock on Tuesdays Colonial Sports Center Thursdays at 930 and Prime Cuts Theater Friday and Saturday evenings at 1130 so for Andre Bryan and Ernie I'm Chris Walker good night everybody take care now this is a part That's very nice. That's Chanel. Okay, that's Chanel. There you go. Here we go. Complex magazine. There you go. Oh no. <laughs> she, did, she, did a, she did a naughty shoot for Complex okay, magazine. Yeah, you naughty little thing. There you go. You can keep that too. Let Frida ring. <laughs> What's that? What are you up to? <laughs> Wait until your mum sees this. Why can we get a, a magazine in which he's featured? Yeah. Give that to me a second. Here you go. Ah, oh, see, there you go. Look at that.
There you go. It looks nothing no. like you. I know. <laughs> look, look at this. 